know most about his involvement uh, beginning in 1783 when he was asked by the Freemasons of Alexandria if he would serve as their charter uh, leader or master of the lodge. Uh, that lodge originally met further east of us behind you uh, in Old Town Alexandria. He agreed, and that's why he's remembered in a special way here today. I want everyone to take a minute and look at this statue in front of you of George Washington. Any guesses as to what material it's made out of? Close. Bronze. Bronze statue, yes. And how about how tall it is? Anyone want to guess how tall? Including the stand, the whole statue. What do you think? The 17 feet tall statue of George Washington. You know, I'll have to go back and check. Maybe that's what I had. Maybe that's without the stand. So the statue itself, I think, is 17. So I'll have to double check about whether that includes the stand or not. And it's about seven tons. It's a very large statue. You'll see later on in the tour. Uh, a, an image of the men bringing that statue to the front steps. One very interesting thing about the building itself is it took about 50 years to complete. And part of the reason why the Freemasons of Alexandria did not accept any loan money for the construction of this building. They only continued to build as they had the money to pay for it. And they used visitor ticket sales and they used donations from me. Freemasons in order to support this building. And even today, their ticket prices go to support the ongoing renovation of the exterior. You've seen the scaffold, and we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of the tour. This sculpture was by uh, Bryant Baker, Freemason from New York. It was unveiled in 1950 by President Harry Truman, who was the past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Missouri. It was donated from the Demo Lay for Boys and Masonic Youth Organization. If you take a look at the statue, you'll notice some really interesting features. Can anyone tell me what they see in terms of what Washington is wearing or holding in his hand? Feel free to shout it out. Yes. Yes. He's got what we call a gavel for leading meetings. Very good. What else? Anything else you notice? The apron and the Masonic apparel. Right. So we've got the jewel and the apron. These are Masonic uh, items, apparel. His hat, yes. And the other hand, is that what you're seeing? Yes. So that represents him as a military leader. All of these items have significance for George Washington as a Freemason. The uh, gavel represents him presiding over the lodge. The apron was a very important. An uh, item that goes back to the tradition from the original stone masons of Europe. Scholars are not sure or clear about when modern or fraternal Freemasonry began, but they do know that a lot of the practices were taken from the stone masons of Europe in the Middle Ages, in which they had to chisel away at the uh, stone and use a heavy protective apron to protect themselves from the debris. So even today, Freemasons will wear an apron within their private meetings and at certain public events. You had a question? The chair. So he was the past master of the lodge, and so those masons who did have a leadership position got to sit in a special chair, and so that represents that. Very good question. Any other questions so far about George Washington becoming a Freemason or about what it means to be a Freemason? Let's go to this mural over here, and I'll talk more about the history of the Masons in America. You're welcome to take as many pictures as you would like here on the tour. We just ask no video recording, please. So, so.
So this is the North Lodge Room in the Masonic Museum. This isn't part of the tour, so I wanted to make sure that I got this for you guys early. So before we go into the large room, I'm just gonna show you some quick artifacts. I just want to make sure that you guys got the full tour of this place. I'm just going to take a look at the. Oh, the yeah, that's the Eastern Star. And. Here is their active lodge room that I believe they still use to this day. So this is an active Masonic lodge room that is still used to this day. A river about nine miles or so is Mount Vernon. You can't really see it, I've been told. So I'm at the very top of the Masonic Museum in Temple. Usually, actually, I, I'm afraid of heights, but being in a cage like this here, I'm all right. So if there was no cage here, I'd be terrified out of my mind. <laughs> Same way if you're, in a, and if you're in an enclosed um, Ferris wheel. Uh -huh. It's just like it's this. It's moving though. I can't do that one. <laughs> this is good enough for me it right moves here. It very slowly though. But look at this view. You gotta admit, this view is awesome. Close, though, you won't feel anything. You're fully enclosed and it moves very slowly. It's just an observation thing. I can't do that. I'm not doing well, that one. This is our first step. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help you overcome you, that fear. You're not gonna help me get on no eye. <laughs> you're not helping me get on there, I'll tell you that right now. But seriously, this view is amazing. And, ooh, it's cold. That was definitely a lot of wind. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wow. This is so much wind. <laughs> Jeez. Huh? Over there, yeah. 